Okay, so this is probably just going to be one or two videos. It's just going to be about adding aim down sights to a first person shooter. So what is aim down sights? Basically, in first person shooters, you have two ways of firing a weapon. The first is uh, basically aiming from the hip. You're holding the weapon and um, you may or may not see the weapon depending on the game and you can just fire. Okay, uh, usually your character has full mobility and uh usually there's a degree of um of accuracy um you take a hit to accuracy where you you don't necessarily aim as well as um as you'd like that maybe the uh the sights shake or that kind of thing the second way of shooting is you then bring the gun up to eye level and you look down the barrel of the gun hence aim down sights because you're looking down along the sights of the weapon now, uh, the most extreme version of this is probably like a sniper scope, okay? Because what that does is usually when you aim down sights, a couple things happen. A, you lose mobility, but you gain stability. So you can't move as fast, but your, your shots won't be as wild. Uh, and the other characteristic is that it zooms in to the enemy. Depending on what type of weapon it is, if it's a handgun, the zoom may be minimal, but something. To the extreme where you have a sniper rifle, which will usually have multiple levels of zoom, uh, and that might be based on, say, the triggers on the top of the uh, game controller. So, let's set up a quick little environment here and demonstrate how aim down sights is accomplished. So let's create a 3D object and we'll use a plane and we'll just expand this out and let's click on the main camera. Okay, so uh, the main camera vertically, so that's up and down, is at 1 and the plane is at negative 4, 9. Let's make that an even negative one okay so now what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly give this a texture or i should say a material that way it's easier to distinguish from the other objects so uh let's just go to material we'll call this ground we'll make the albedo like a brownish color and then just drag and drop that under the ground. And let's remove some of the smoothness. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this character, drag and drop them into the scene. And this is just an asset that I got from the asset store. Looks like they need to be rotated around. Oops, not that many directions. Let's grab that. All right, so that's looking like a full 180 on the Y. And now we'll just drop them down so they're ground level. Let's see how that looks in the camera. Okay, that's good. So they're kind of far away. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the uh, uh, sniper scope, which I haven't added yet. I'll go to... Uh, the external folder and just drag and drop it in. I'll probably do a quick splice while I'll do that. Okay, and there it is. So when you bring in a uh, new uh, uh, a new image, when you're in the 3D environment, it defaults to texture. In this case, we're actually going to turn this um, into a sprite. And we'll just do apply. Let's get rid of the mip maps and apply again. Go ahead, put that into the site, or into the scene, I should say. Okay. So it looks like, depending on where we're going to put it, a little bit too big, which is fine. It gives us a chance to show you two ways to shrink uh, a sprite. You can click on the base image and increase the pixels per unit because it's a ratio. So the bigger the number, the smaller the object. So let's do 150, see how that looks. You can see it got smaller. Okay. OK. 
Okay, it's actually going into the ground. So... That's good enough, actually. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the sniper scope. I'm going to lower it. Now, here's what happens with um, when you when you're uh, aiming down sights. As I mentioned, usually you get a measure of zoom. So in addition to your weapon being steadier, you get a zoom. So even though you're not closer to the enemy, they appear a little bit bigger. So it's just easier to hit a bigger target. So that's part of the of the buff, particularly when it's a sniper rifle. Now, how do we do a zoom without actually moving the camera? Because obviously, if you move the camera, everything gets bigger. But then you're closer to the enemy, too. And we're not trying to give you a teleport ability. We just want to change how everything looks. Well, the key is the field of view here. Watch what happens when we change the field of view. As it gets smaller, same thing, zooms in. So that's really what we want. So we'll go back out to 40. It's kind of big, so let's actually go out to, uh, let's go out to 60. Okay. Because I want this to, to, I want it to be enough of a change to be obvious. So what we're going to do is this. Since it's the um, field of view, which is an attribute of the camera, what I'm thinking we want to do for a shortcut, we're just going to attach a script right to the camera to control the camera and to control the scope. So here's what we're going to do. Right click, create, C sharp, and we'll just call this uh, sniper zoom. So we click on the camera, put on sniper zoom, and we open that up. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to look for the key press that says that you are zooming in. So a couple ways we're going to do this. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to use the keyboard. It's easy enough just to remap it so it's a game controller. And you would do that through um, edit, project settings, and then input. Uh, that's where you configure the game controller. I have a whole separate uh, uh, couple tutorials about the game controller. You can just simply reference those. Um, or maybe if you want to, I can do an, an add-on to this. I'm just trying to uh, have the basics, and that is the idea of changing the field of view. So we're just going to public. Key code. And it's going to be zoom. We'll call it zoom key. And we'll save that. So if we go to the camera, it's got the script attached to it. Now it's looking for zoom key. You just click on the Drop, uh, the drop down box. We're going to choose space. And now what we see is if, zoom in a little bit, no pun intended, zoom in on the script, that is, if input dot get key. Uh, let's do get key down that way. If you do get key every single frame that the key is pressed, uh, it, this this if statement would be true. We want it to be true just once, and that is when you first press it. So input dot get key down, and what get the key down? It is going to be the zoom key. So if that is being pressed, then something happens, and then it's just get component. What component? We want the camera component. All right. Well, what part of the camera? We want field of view. There it is. And we want to change it. So this is going to be an instant uh, zoom in. It's not going to like be a smooth zoom. You're just instantly going to see 
uh, the change and it's set to 40. And technically, that's all it takes. So we'll run it. If we hit the, when we hit the space key, it should zoom in. Okay, not really severe, but maybe this would be more of, say, uh, an assault weapon as opposed to the sniper scope. So we can change this a little bit more. Again, we'll hit the key. So there, now you're really zoomed in. Now we'll also add the scope. So the scope's there, we just haven't done anything with it. Now since the scope is um, since the scope is physically located at the moment in the scene, it would no longer be visible. So the scope is going to need to move based on uh, the field of view. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another variable. This one will be for the scope. So public transform capital T and we'll call this scope OBJ. Save it. Now, if it creates collider issues or you're having other troubles, rather than having the scope be in the scene, you could take the scope, drag and drop it down here. And then what you would do is rather than just moving the scope, you'd actually instantiate the scope. And then when you get out of the zoom, you would destroy the scope. You just keep instantiating and destroying. So you could turn it to a prefab and instantiate it. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible, though. So what we want is we want the scope to be in the field of view of the camera. So if we raise this up, run this, the scope's already there, which we don't want until you uh, uh, zoom in. So as you can see, it zooms in on this too, and we don't want that. So what we can do Let's, well first let's put the scope object onto the scope object variable. Okay, so it's there. So now uh, we're going to take this and we're going to put it behind the camera to begin with. And then we're going to just move it slightly in front of the camera. So right now, the scope is negative 11. Let's just move it forward. So, uh, as I've said, we, we can control it because the camera is aware of the scope because of this object. So in the same area that you're doing the zoom, you also want to make the scope visible. So let's have it be scope obj dot get component transform position equals new vector three so the three positions we want, we want the we want 0 0.64, but then we need to change this so that the camera can see it. So the Z. So 0 0.64. Go to put an F since it's a fraction, since it's a decimal, and then let's try negative seven. So now you won't see it by default because it's behind the camera as intended. And then when you hit the space, okay, not bad when you got the full screen. So you actually might want that effect. But if you want to actually see the scope, it's not quite right. So 
Uh, let's make that like negative four. Okay, still not quite right. There we go. So that's just about right. Uh, obviously, you can still nitpick it a little bit, but that's the basics of, of um, doing the zoom and getting your crosshairs scope on the screen. Obviously, this is very rudimentary. I just drew it quickly in a 2D program. You would actually use like a 3D model for yours. Maybe the inside here would actually have a, like um, a color. Maybe it's meant to look like night vision. There's all kinds of things you can do once you start dealing with polygons and, and models. So let's end this first video here, and then the second video we can handle movement because that's kind of ancillary, but I'll show you how you can have them moving at one speed, and then it gets reduced when you're in sniper mode, in your scope mode. But at least we've got the basics that you can now toggle between uh, regular mode and sniper mode. You get the benefit of zooming in without moving the camera. The camera is still at the same location, so you're still the actual same distance away.